Bolt Iris projects are by default organized by form factor. You have your screens defined for your phones, uh, you have them defined for your tablets, as well as your responsive web or progressive web applications. Applications are assembled using a library of widgets below or using one of the pre-built sets of components of various widget layouts that are available to use across all form factors. They range from different text field layouts to different screen layouts to other types of collections that you can use and reuse across your application library. Screens are available that present a variety of layouts to use as starting blocks for your application uh, instead of just creating them from scratch. Now, creating a form and creating a screen within the IDE is very straightforward. The user either starts with a blank screen and then from there either reverts to one of the collections or library of, of pre-built screens, or they can immediately start dragging the widgets out and configuring their properties as you see here. Now, I'm just going to go ahead and grab a couple of widgets. We'll put a text box and we'll put a button out here. And then we'll start to manipulate their layout properties using the flex properties that will become available on the right side of your screen over on the tab below. Here you can rename your widget and then also control the sizing and the layout for the widgets using a, a variety of units, whether it's density pixels, whether it's pixel exact, or whether it's percent based. You can mix and match the units. You don't have to lock yourself into one specific set of units. Styling the widgets is done through the concept of a skin where we expose the CSS-like properties for things like backgrounds, borders, shadows, etc. And depending upon the widget you're working with, you'll have different properties available to you to manipulate. Now these skins can be duplicated, copied, re reused across all widgets of the same type and then also saved off as part of a theme. And then that theme can either be dynamically updated at runtime or at design time. Changes are immediately visible within the canvas area. So as you make your adjustments to the look and feel, you see them reflected across all of the devices that that widget is deployed for. Additional properties are set and configured correspondingly for each skin. And then, as I mentioned, the skins are also stored off as part of a theme that can be updated dynamically at runtime or design time. Moving on to the next tab, we have the actual behavior properties for a widget. The IDE exposes both common properties across all platforms, as well as platform-specific properties, where we start to bubble up all the features and characteristics that the SDKs provide from a functionality standpoint. Individual properties are displayed for each platform and controlled through the properties sheet here because we want to be able to allow the developer to configure their application rather than having to write code around it. And so now we'll just go ahead and speed this up a little bit to finish out completing this little login box that we're creating on this form. And you'll notice that I'm just going through and, and finishing up the, the styling as well as duplicating the text box to carry over not only the style, but also the behavioral properties that I want to move, as well as then being able to just go ahead and modify the individual separate ones uh, to make it uh, a password field and mask the text. Once well, finally assembled, the collection of widgets that you see here in this box can actually be created as a component, either with a contract or without a contract, where you can create instances of it or have it change and be it reflected across all the apps it's used, or you can just add it to a local library and reuse that collection as any future application development might want. This way you're able to put your own customized collections of widgets together in your own designs, and that way be able to reuse these collections across any application, whether that's a phone, whether that's a tablet, or whether that's even a web application. You go into the library within the IDE, bring up your set of collections that you've created, and you can simply just drag and drop that collection out and all of the behavioral as well as all of the style properties will be carried forward and configured for you. Now, once it comes time to actually performing logic within the application, we look at the list of events that are exposed by a widget and we edit one of these to bring up the low code action editor. 
This is where through pointing and clicking your way, you can create your business logic for your application without having to write code. Actions, conditions, calling services, manipulating APIs, as well as even performing animations and mapping data from services is all available as a set of configurable actions that don't require you to become an expert JavaScript developer. Putting in conditional logic is simply pointing in the if statement and then being able to select one of the many properties that you can refer to when you want to go ahead and set up that logic. Now you can enter variables here in the form of JavaScript as well as being able to write entire code snippets or even call functions that you've declared in either a controller or a module file. Those are also available to you. Navigating to screens is simply just selecting the form you want to move to and then again configuring additional logic you may see as part of your overall action flow. Integrating into the VACN systems through the Vault Foundry middleware is made available in the IDE through the data panel. The data panel provides you a view of all the services that are deployed for your application and then also provides the opportunity for you to create new ones if you need to. The full library of connectors from Vault Foundry is available to be configured within the IDE environment as well as any service that's currently deployed you have the ability to go and edit and make changes to. Using services within the application is done through a couple of different means. One can write code to invoke and use the services. One can use the action editor and use the invoke service action, as we saw earlier, to configure your access to these services. Or you can use the services to actually generate some UI layouts based upon the structure of the data. From the storyboard view, you can take your service, drag it in there, and based upon whether it's an input service or whether it's a, a get service, you can generate list forms, detail forms, as well as input forms for your application. It's a convenient way of rapidly spinning up the initial set of screens for your app, whether that's a native phone, tablet, or web application, and then have some business logic automatically generated, including all of the data mappings between that service call and the UI. This way you can generate the initial set of logic and code and layouts that you need and then just go in and make any sort of incremental changes afterwards. Building applications in the IDE is also done directly within the tool. The tool uses the underlying SDKs and tool sets for both Apple and Android to generate native applications yet we automate it all through scripting so that way the developer does not have to move into those tools to complete the process nor have to perform any sort of post code generation activities. The ability to connect to both devices and emulators is available within the environment and then building web applications is also made available through the development environment as well. Native applications for Android and iOS can also be built using protected mode which enables some built-in software protections to help reduce tampering with the binary, providing features like code obfuscation, etc. useful for when you're having to secure that application further. Access to configure all the native properties for an application are available within the IDE as well. So that way the developer does not have to worry about moving into those native tool sets to go and set up the configuration for producing the final binary outputs. The ability to modify the Android manifest the iOS icons, everything you would need that you would normally do within those development tool chains are available here within the IDE to help with that build process. Once those applications are built, unit testing can be performed from the IDE using the preview application or by debugging directly to a device from the environment. The ability to hook up also a test recorder feature within the tool allows a developer to generate their test scripts in the form of Jasmine or TestNG that can then be later reused as part of either an overall CI CD process or as a means to perform unit automated tests locally at the developer's workstation. The test scripts can be generated through unit testing the app then saved off as part of the project and stored in source control along with the rest of the application code. 
Well, this concludes this demo of the IRIS IDE. We'd like to thank you for taking the time to consider HCL Volt MX.